Right, Unit 2, Lesson 4, Transformations of Functions. So as before, I'm just going to walk through some of the tasks, which uh, there's some of them that you have to do by yourself because there's some graphing and stuff involved, and we'll, uh, I'll just prompt you through that. But to start with, we're going to look at Task 1. So in Task 1, what you're looking at is you're given that f of x equals x squared. And you're told to write an equivalent expression for these other things that you're given. Okay, so if y equals 2f of x, well remember, swapping things out is very important. So for a, y equals 2f of x, well f of x is x squared. So swap out f of x for x squared. Okay, you see how it works? y equals 2f of x plus 4. Well, straightforward. Let's look at c. y equals f of 2x. So what does that mean? So let's just see. So that means, look, our input now into f is 2x. Okay? So wherever you see an x in, th in the function rule at the top, you're going to pull out that x and replace it with 2x in parentheses. So what we're going to get for c then is something like this. We're going to get y, sorry, put that in black y equals 2x squared, which gives you 4x squared in total, right? And uh, let's look at the last one. So the last one, it's going to be y equals 2f of x minus 3. So let's just see how we would write that. Let's just go with it from the beginning and work through it. So y equals 2f of x minus 3. So f of x minus 3... That means we're pulling out the x's from the original rule and replacing it with x minus 3. So it's 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 4. If you look at that, that is <coughs> the equation of a parabola, or a quadratic, written in vertex form. Okay. Now we could expand that out to get it in standard form, but <coughs> we don't necessarily need to do that. Okay, on to task 2. So task two, so again, we're looking at the parent quadratic function f of x equals x squared. And if we transform this parent function according to the equation minus 3 f of x plus 2 plus 4. Okay, so what does that look like? So that's going to give you that g of x equals minus 3. f of x plus 2 is just x plus 2 squared plus a 4 at the end there, right? <coughs> okay, so use the equation to write the equation of the... Okay, to write it in vertex form. So that's what we have there, look. We've, we've changed g of x into vertex form. It's written clearly in vertex form, right? There we go. If we look at part b, it asks you to graph both functions, the parent function and this new one, in Desmos, and note down the transformations from the image of the parent function to the transform function. So let's have a look and see what that would be like. <clears throat> and before I do that, I just want to rewrite the function in terms of f of x as well, because remember, g of x was also written as minus 3 f of x plus 2 plus 4. Okay, so I want to compare, I want to have a look at both of them. Okay, so these are two different expressions for f of x, but they both mean the same thing. Now, if we look at the graphs of the functions, you're going to see that the parent function, f of x equals x squared, what that gives you, firstly, it gives you a vertex at the point 0, 0. Okay, that's the parent function. Now, if you look at the vertex of g of x, you'll see that its coordinates are minus 2, 4, right? So that means that what actually happened was that there was a translation took place of the parent function. A translation is just where it's moved. And the translation <coughs> was a translation by minus 2, 4. And it's, look, it's written like that. It's like a little matrix. 
Okay, so it's, the number is minus 2, 4, clearly separated, so it's not minus 24, and it's in parentheses without a comma. Okay, because if it's a comma there, you're going to think that it's a pair of coordinates. It's not. It's telling you the translation. It's moved it two units to the left, and it's moved it four units up. Okay, that's what's happened to the vertex, so that means the whole graph has been shifted like that. <coughs> now, the next piece, which is going to take a little bit of explaining. <coughs> Firstly, we notice as well that the graph has been flipped upside down. And the flipping upside down comes from the negative at the front. So just let me highlight here that these things are connected, right? Now, the minus flips it, but we want to see what does the impact of the 3 have. Well, that number in front, what we say that does is it's a vertical stretch. So we'll say, I'm going to write this down. Uh, first, vertical stretch by factor of 3. And here's what that means. So, let's just say... Now, you could just use the idea that that number at the front, we'll refer back to it later, represents a vertical stretch. But here's how to think about that. Now, you can do this on Desmos, right? But if you do a graph of f of x equals x squared... It's going to look like this. Okay? That's f of x equals x squared. If you do f of x equals 3x squared, it's going to look like this. Okay? Now that should go all the way down to the vertex, by the way, or down to the origin. What that means is, right, that's f of x equals 3x squared. Okay, so... That 3 actually makes the graph thinner. <coughs> People think it should make it fatter, but it's not. Here's the reason why. Because if you take the function, if you look at f of x equals x squared, and you put in 3 as an input, you're going to get 9 as an output. So look, the point 3, 9, 3 is here, and we say the 9 is that point there. So say that's the point 3, 9. But if you put in 3 as an input, into the second function, which we should call g of x, actually. What are you going to get? You're going to get 3x squared, so you're going to get 327. So we have here as our 3, but look, it climbs much more rapidly. So because of that, that 3 is making the graph climb more rapidly, which means that it's thinning. It's thin, and we say that what we say is that it's a vertical stretch. It's been pulled upwards. And it's been stretched because it's not moving off the origin. It's still stuck to the origin, but it's just been stretched upwards. All right? So that's the principle behind that very idea there. So when you look back at it, and it asks you to acknowledge what the transformations that were made to the parent function were. So if we go back and look at our original function, wherever it was, you're going to see that we get something like we had g of x equals minus 3 times x plus 2 squared plus h. Or we also had it as minus 3f of x plus 2 plus 4. So, this number here meant we went left by 2. This number here meant that it went up by 4. The minus flipped it upside down, and the 3 stretched it. So basically what we did to the parent function to get this new one, g of x, we moved it two units left and four units up first. Then we flipped it upside down, and then we pulled a stretch on it, and then we got our new function. <coughs> and that's basically it. Right, task three. So in task three, what we're given, we're given a parabola, and we're asked to write the equation in vertex form. Okay. So, to start off, that should be pretty easy, because <clears throat> if we look at the graph, we'll see that we have actually the coordinates of the vertex, which is minus 2, 8. So, we're going to fill it in. y equals a times x minus 2 squared, actually x plus 2 squared plus 8. And the reason why we have the plus 2 here is because h is minus 2, so minus h is plus 2. So, now, we have it kind of filled out to start with. And, sorry for my uh, runny nose. If we look, 
we can see also that we have two other points of the graph that we can fill in to help us find A. For example, we have a coordinate of the vertex, or an x-intercept, sorry, at the point 2, 0. Okay, so there's a value for y and x that we can fill in. 0 for the y equals A times 2 plus 2 squared plus 8. How does that help? Well, 0 is equal to 2 plus 2 is 4 squared, so 16a plus 8. So that means that uh, minus 16a equals 8. So a is minus a half. So that's part A answered. The equation of it in vertex form is minus a half x plus 2 squared plus 8. Now, let's round that off there to show that that's part A answered. And then for B, what are the transformations? Okay, so let's read this question carefully. <coughs> the transformations necessary to obtain the function in part A from the parent function involve a vertical stretch by a factor of t. So your stretch is your number at the front here. Okay, so vertical stretch by a factor of a half. The minus, we don't worry about the minus, that just tells us that it's flipped upside down. So that means vertical stretch by a factor of t and the translation of p, q. Find the values of t, p, and q. t is a half. It's a vertical stretch by a half, which actually means it's a compression. Okay, if you stretch by a fraction, you're actually compressing it downwards. Now, Here's the tricky part of this. What are we doing? So when you're talking about P and Q there, the, the, the letters representing the translation of the graph. The graph has been moved four units to the, or sorry, has moved two units to the left. So that means that P is minus two. We would think it's plus two because plus two in the function moves it left. But when we're asked for the, translation, this is a translation vector, you need to write it as minus 2a, 2 to the left and 8 up. Okay? So when you're writing what the actual translation is, this is telling you we take, subtract 2 from the x-coordinate and we add 8 to the y. That might be confusing for people because when it's written in vertex form, that minus 2 becomes a plus 2. But we can talk through that after. Right, in task 4, Consider the function f of x equals minus 2x squared minus 12x plus 6. The graph of f of x is transformed to g of x just by translating it one unit to the left and three units up. That's what that notation means, the translation vector. Okay, find the resulting equation in the form g of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Right, well, let's have a look at how that would work. In that situation, I think that the vertex is a very important point in a parabola. So when you have f of x equals minus 2x squared minus 12x plus 6, I would be thinking, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the vertex of that, and then I'm going to move that one unit left and three units up to get my new vertex. So let's see, what would that look like? If I was to get the coordinates of the vertex of that, okay, so the x-coordinate is the same as the line of symmetry. So minus b over 2a, so it's minus minus 12, so 12, over 2a over minus 4. So that's the x-coordinate of my vertex. Now we get the y-coordinate of the vertex by subbing that in to the original function. Okay, so <coughs> minus 12 times minus 3 plus 6. So what does that give me? <clears throat> so, that's going to give me uh, 9 minus 18 plus 36, so 24. Correct me if I'm wrong on that now, but I think that's correct. So minus 3, 24 is the coordinates of the vertex of the original function. Okay, so vertex equals minus 3, 24. Right, let's move it down. Now... That means g of x, sorry, keep that there, that g of x, remember, is the same function as that, but we're moving everything one unit left and three units up. 
So if we move at one unit left, that means the x-coordinate changes to minus 4. And if we move it three units up, 27. So our new function, remember, the only transformation that's been made to it is this translation. So now look, let's go back and fill it in in vertex form. So g of x equals, the minus 2 isn't changed because remember it said that it didn't affect the, the stretch or anything like that. It only affected it by moving it, by translating it. So fill it in in vertex form, x plus 4 squared plus 27. Now it says that it wants it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's going to be equal to minus 2 times x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus 27. So that's minus 2x squared minus 16x. And then we have minus 32 plus 27, so minus 5. That's all it is. Okay? That's part A done. So you just have to set it up. Remember, you're always talking about getting the entry point right for the question. And then part B asks, what would it look like if the vertex is reflected across the x-axis? Okay, so if G is then reflected across the x-axis, so let's, we found out already that the coordinates of the vertex are 4 and, what was it, 27, minus 4, 27. Okay, let me check that again. Let's make sure I have the signs and all right. So minus 4, 27 is the vertex. So, okay, so we're going to reflect that across the x-axis. So we say minus 4, 27. Just say that's it there, minus 4, 27. If I reflect it across the x-axis, that means that it's going to come all the way down here. So look, its x-coordinate doesn't change, okay, because it's still the same distance away from the y-axis. Okay, it's still to the left of the y-axis, so its x-coordinate doesn't change. But if you look at its y-coordinate, flips from being up to down, so that becomes negative. Minus 4, minus 27. And that would be the coordinates of the vertex if it was reflected across the x-axis. x-axis.